That is dope. That's dope. That's dope. It is Monday, May 10th, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. What is up, everybody? I hope that you are having a wonderful day. You had an amazing weekend and stayed drama-free and did not have fun staying poor, that you had fun getting marginally more wealthy than you were before. So I do this every single Monday. Sometimes it's an AMA with an amazing project. Sometimes I look at charts. Sometimes I answer questions. We can just kind of see how it goes. We're going to see how it goes, right? Oh, first smash the thing and do the thing. You got to, um, the one that goes like this, not the one that goes like this, smash the like button. And, um, you know, go ahead and subscribe to my channel so that um, I can have more followers and it makes me feel important, helps my ego. And uh, at the end of the day, all that matters really is your ego. A lot going on in, uh, in, in, in the crypto space right now. I alluded to this a couple times today, something I, I want to talk about because, my God, JP Morgan and these banks are such dickheads, such dickheads. Jamie Dimon, this is the CEO of, uh, of JP Morgan, who for years said, hey, you know, like if my employees trade Bitcoin, I'm going to fire them on the spot. Bitcoin is the devil. It's terrible. It's the worst. But we all know that in the background, they're like, creating JP Morgan coin and they're now entering Bitcoin services. Well, today I got this uh, thing from Forbes asking me for a quote. And let me see what it said. This is, this is what JP Morgan had to say about Ethereum today. But some analysts said Ethereum's increasing valuation was not underpinned by data of how widely it is used. The continued divergence of its price relative to network, act network activity raised questions about its valuation, JP Morgan analysts wrote and report to clients. Factors such as the number of digital active addresses in its network would be more consistent with a price of around $1,000, the bank said. $1,000, that's what they said. These guys are smoking so much crack, I don't even know how they make it through, through the day. Probably hasn't slept in five days or smoking so much crack. And, and like I said on, on Twitter, like Jamie Dimon is like, He's like the G G Gustavo Fring, you know, from Breaking Bad, or he's like the, the drug kingpin who like works at a bank and is all buttoned up and seems like all established and whatever. And then he's got his like soldiers and dudes down on the corner secretly like slinging, slinging rocks. They're like, yo, son, like come over here. Yo, I got that good Ethereum. Boy, I got those Doge, Doge option, options. I got that ETH. Got that ETH. Get you high, man. We all know, we all know that JP Morgan is deep deep in crypto and they just want to see lower prices so they can buy more. They're such assholes. They're such assholes. They're talking exactly the opposite of what they're doing. And they have been since the beginning. I mean, look, I'm going to share my screen. There's some, whatever, let me look at this. Oh, they're such assholes. Sorry. One second. Let me share my screen. So we're going to look at this. So in that thing, what did he say? He said, factors such as the number of active digital addresses in its network would be more consistent with the price of around 1000 Their concern is that. This is the chart. This is the chart. This is their transactions, all-time high. This is active addresses, which just broke its 2018 bull run all-time high and has continued up. Like, what data are you looking at? Are you? I, I literally feel like they're just making stuff up to, yeah, you know, let me think. Uh, what would make people really scared? I'm just going to throw $1,000 out there. It's worth $1,000, right? I mean, and, and they talk about another thing that they were talking about is, um, where was it? NVT, <clears throat> network valued transaction. And they were saying in the report that, you know, NVT was dropping, which meant that, uh, that uh, you know, Ethereum wasn't worth what it is. When it's right here, this means the transaction volume is surging, but the price of crypto hasn't been rising to meet its higher activity. As a result, there could be big growth potential in the future. Dropping NVT is actually bullish for a cryptocurrency. It's so dumb. It's so dumb. They, they, can't, uh, they, can't, they can't stop themselves. Anyways, that's my little rant. JP Morgan is so full of shit and it's annoying. It's annoying. It's annoying. So listen, guys, I'm going to let you guys, uh, I'm going to 
kind of do a little AMA vibe over here. If you guys have any specific questions, go ahead and ask them over here. I'm telling you, man, JP Morgan, it's like, it's, it's like Jamie Dimon's like Stringer Bell. You know, you guys watch The Wire, right? It's like Stringer Bell. And then you got like, you got like Snoop and Weebay and Bodie. They're like down in the streets and they're like his dudes doing, doing the dirty work. Man, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's the same thing. But anyways, I know someone said I love The Wire. Everyone loves The Wire. If you've never watched The Wire, it's probably the greatest show ever. Um, do you think Binance is worried about Doge to pass the market? I don't think Binance cares about Doge. Um, you know, tell us about Doge. What is your opinion? Doge is my favorite meme of all time, but it's a complete joke. We print billions of them every year. Um, we saw the most obvious um, opportunity to sell the news in history on Saturday Night Live this weekend. Listen, Doge could go. I have no idea how high Doge could do could go, but there's no reason for it. I love Doge. It's been the most profitable asset I've ever traded in my entire life. Anyone who follows me knows that I'm like a huge Doge fan. It used to be a joke for years that I was like the Doge guy because it had the pump and dumps. And every time it would come down, I would be like, guys, just buy Doge and wait forever and see what happens. And it would always go back up. But this time, dude, I sold it like 180 sats. It went like, uh, you know, I could have done another 70x or something from where we sold it this time. And that was after a 10x. And it is what it is. But like Doge does not have any fundamental new value that it didn't have before. It's really, really fun to trade. But the moment you start viewing it as like an investment, Doge is the future of money. Doge, man, you can buy Daleks Mavericks hats with it, bro. It's like, it's like the future. You can buy like one thing with Doge in like five places and all of a sudden it's the future. Uh, guys, I don't know. And now we have what? Shibu, Shibu, Inu, Shibu, that shit's on Binance. Literally like their pitch for that coin is better than Doge because you can hold a billion or a trillion of them. Woo, man. I don't know. I do not know what is up with that. I'm trying to read some of your questions here. Let me see what this says. Just last year, the fresh legal trouble comes a little over a month after JP Morgan agreed to pay a 920 million fine for manipulating the markets for precious metals. Yes, these guys are money launderers. <laughs> when you see when you see someone um, screaming about how Bitcoin is only used by criminals, you can be pretty sure that that person is probably trying to deflect from their criminal activity and hiding money for criminals. JP Morgan. JP Morgan, ladies and gentlemen. Thoughts on Safe Moon? I don't have any because I don't prefer to buy things that have either the word safe or the word moon in the title because both of those are made to made to cover up the fact that it's probably unsafe and is probably not going to the moon. Sorry. I know nothing about it, but like that's literally like uh, calling a coin Safe Moon and I have nothing I don't even know any much about it. I'm just saying calling a coin Safe Moon, they did that the same reason that like when you're flipping through the internet, there's a picture of a girl with massive like breasts or who's like really attractive or some like super fit dude for like an article that says like, check out what this star from the 1980s looks like now. And it's literally not even a picture of that person. It's clickbait. It's clickbait. You call something safe moon just to get a bunch of people to go, holy shit, it's safe and it's going to the moon. And people are um, dumb enough for that to buy it for just that reason. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't buy something on SafeMoon just because it was called SafeMoon, personally. Personally. What are your thoughts on Layer 2 Solutions? What is your favorite project? I love them, and I'm a huge fan of Matic Polygon. I've said that forever, um, and uh, I think they're amazing. I've been invested since it was pennies, and now it is hit a buck, right? So uh, amazing. Um, I would, if I was going to make a coin that I wanted to spam, scam people with, I would probably call it Safer Moon. Safest Moon. Saferest Moon. Safe, saferest Moon. I think Saferest Moon would be a really good name. Saferest Mars. The safest Mars moons. Moons of Mars. Uh, guys, guys, I have no idea what Safe Moon is. I just know that it's, it's, 
should should not have this level of FOMO around it. And I generally stay stay away from things that everybody's like FOMOing into and it's going crazy because listen, it could be like, I don't know, maybe Safe Moon is gonna like cure COVID next week. I have no idea. But like there's no reason for all this excitement about it. It's not it's not doing anything. It's changing the world. I love Doge, but Doge is like nothing's different about Doge than when it was 15 sats. It's just Doge. And I love it, but it's just Doge, right? So, I mean, listen, I had like on Friday and Saturday, I, I, I had at least seven or eight people who like have no interest generally in crypto hit me up and be like, I should buy Doge into Saturday Night Live, right? Like, I should do that. And I was like, no, you should sell Doge into Saturday Night Live because, you know, just makes absolutely no sense. When everybody wants something, it just doesn't happen. Right. Everybody wanted it to like go to a dollar while Elon Musk was on Saturday Night Live. Why would that happen? When have like when has everybody piled into a trade and been right ever? I don't know. Probably never. Probably absolutely never. You know, whatever. It wasn't gonna happen. So um listen, yeah, let me see. All people investing in shit coins with no use case should be rugged to the ground. That's aggressive. Listen, like trading is fun. I think that these assets can be great for trading. I don't think that people should go broke because unfortunately they don't know. So, um, <clears throat> sorry, uh, I'm trying, you guys are going too fast over here, so I can't keep up with the questions. Uh, I'm trying, I'm trying, but failing. Yeah, show me some love, guys. Show me some love. Click the love thing. Uh, most of you guys are just like asking about coins. Safe Uranus is the future of money going to the moon. It will save all the kids in Africa. We own 90% of the supply. Please buy so I can afford college. Sarcasm. By the way, that slash S means sarcasm, and that should be used on Twitter everywhere so that people know when we're being sarcastic. Um, and that's great. Bought Doge at 0.04, sold at 69 cents. Nice. Well done, Danny DeVito, apparently, is who you are judging by your picture. That's great. Okay. So, yeah, this is this is a good... Okay. With the 50K strike, is this a sign that a super cycle is coming? So, listen, the 50K strike, I love it. For those of you who don't know, Deribit has now priced uh, futures for March 2022 with a strike at $50,000. Doesn't mean it's going to fifty thousand dollars. It just means that there's enough interest and in people who are willing to make that bet for the uh, disproportionate gain. That if it happened, even though it's unlikely, they would make mad money. I don't think it's a sign that a super cycle is coming. I think it's a sign that you know we're all pretty exuberant. Not a bad thing necessarily in this case, but like that, you know, having it, the price could be $5,000 next year and nobody would be surprised that it missed by $45,000. So I don't think it's next necessarily a sign of a super cycle, but I do, do think that it shows that people are exceptionally bullish. And I think that rightfully so. I, I don't see any fundamental reason right now for Ethereum to not uh, continue its rise. That doesn't mean we won't do this and we won't have huge retraces and go back up and whatever. But, you know, um, I, I think that uh, DeFi is only growing and most of it's being built on Ethereum. And at a very, very basic level, that's what you need to know, right? Um, so, yeah, people are like, just, you guys are just, oh, listen, Future Unchanged, he's here. He's here. Every week he shows up like 15 minutes late. I don't know who he is. And he makes sure to tell me that he's here. So I'm just going to go ahead with the trend since I saw it. Um, I, I have no, uh, oh, I have no opinion on that. I don't know. Bunch of, I'm not a, I'm not an in it for the tech dude. I have a very basic understanding, but, um, oh, uh, Rye Somerville, he's here too. If, if you guys were waiting for him to arrive, he's here. Um, all right. I'm going to look at some charts. Let's look at some charts. Let's look at some charts because, uh, it's too hard for me to even see what the hell's happening in the comments, to be honest. Let's take a look at the Bitcoins. Shiba Inu pump? Who cares? It's literally the coin is a joke. Don't invest in jokes. Trade a joke. Don't invest in jokes. I don't care about Shiba Inu coin. I do love the dogs though. They're very cute. I don't see any reason to even like think about Bitcoin right now, frankly. 
it's so boring. It's so boring. So boring. Why would we trade this? I mean, yeah, inverse head and shoulders and whatever. This is sideways chop. And it's like Bart Simpson, Bart Simpson, Bart Simpson. Excuse me. This is reverse Bart Simpson or upside down Bart Simpson into Bart Simpson, into another Bart Simpson, into absolute chop fest of death. Yeah, you got a golden cross here on the four hour, if that's your thing. 50 MA crossing up to 200. Price only goes up on golden crosses, bro, now. Um, and it's testing both of those as support. So this could be a good end. If you're an MA trader right now and you look at the four hour, then you're definitely like smashing the buy button because that would be your thing. Not my thing. I don't give a shit about it, but it'd be your thing. It's what you'd be doing right now. You'd be really excitedly buying at this moment. But like, how do you trade this? You don't. And at the end of the day, I was saying, listen, we need to get above here and hold. Well, let's see if I have a daily chart. Yeah, here it is on the daily. Look, this is not good. Um, I don't speak Spanish particularly well, but if I did, I would say no bueno. Right? No bueno. One, two, three wicks above this swing high. That's the highest price went after this drop. Three wicks, no good. This wick, this one doesn't count yet, but we cannot close above that yet. We got to close above 59,000, in my humble opinion. And we had bearish divergence, right? Got to overbought, had bearish divergence, dropped, came back up, another little bearish divergence. Eventually, we're going to get to oversold. I'm not saying we're going to dump. I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying like... I don't short Bitcoin. I have no interest in short shorting something that's going to a million dollars, but I also like, I have no interest in buying it when it's just like chopping sideways and drifting down. So for now, I would say extremely minimal interest in trading Bitcoin. That would change if probably a daily closed up here, you know, one of these. Then, you know, up as high as you can draw. Like ETH? 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 You say Ethereum? Urethrium? I mean, look at Urethrium. Urethrium. This is one, two, three, four, five, six. We're in the seventh potentially green week in a row for Ethereum against Bitcoin. What Ethereum is doing to Bitcoin right now is illegal in like 48 states in the United States. I just can't, I generally just like throw Alabama and Mississippi type states out. Yeah, who knows what you're allowed to do there? I don't know. But like, this is ridiculous. And I've been screaming about it. Like, and a lot of people have. I'm not taking any credit, but like, uh, you know, I've been dollar cost averaging into Ethereum since like Jesus was at the Last Supper because I thought that it was going to outperform. So, like, yeah, like I had drawn here before. Here, this is what you would call a um, <clears throat> a bullish breaker, a supply zone that should have stopped price, so it becomes support. So you'll be looking for, if it comes down, I'm not saying it will, that's the trade I would be looking for against Bitcoin if you can get it, because otherwise, I mean, you know, whatever. But we're coming up here, I think. I think we're going to go up here. I mean, look at it on the USDT, uh, on the USD pair. It's ridiculous. Let's say, yeah, let's do it here. Well, we hit the target of 3,600 that I was screaming about. When people were calling me Moon Boy. Mm, Moon Boy. Like, yeah. I mean, now we got this support, this support. Maybe you could draw something in here, here ish, 2946. I'll give a line there. But you just buy dips now. Just buy dips on Ethereum. There's nothing that looks like it's topping. And look, volume's even increasing again today after the weekend. Ethereum looks ridiculous. I'm coming back over here. <clears throat> Um, looking at the comments, but basically, uh, you guys are, I don't know what you're doing over here. Uh, crypto Michael is not in a very good mood and scoot is not really a jumping of joy today. I'm in a great mood. First of all, scoot's an awesome name. I'm going to adopt it. I'm just trying to tell you how it is because people are doing some really stupid things right now in this market. Some really stupid things. And, you know, when you get normal people flooding in, it's our responsible to try to give them responsible information, in my opinion. But I can be like, I can be sunshines and unicorn farts or whatever. I, I'm going to be happy now. 
It didn't like my mood, so I'm going to smile more. Uh, this is, I just opened a bunch of charts. Don't know why. Bitcoin Cash. Bitcoin Cash. So look. Right. Let's, let's go back. Look at Ethereum. Long-term resistance. Broke it. Okay. Litecoin, a long-term resistance, broke it. Not not as long-term. I'm going to open, uh, look. That's because we're talking about dinosaur coins, right? Uh, XRP, let's look at ADA. I don't know which chart is correct, but bear with me. ADA. Where is it? That's not the chart I want, but we can look at it this way. Yeah, you can draw any of these lines. You can see the ADA, like if you drew a resistance here, resistance here, broke out, right? That's not the point. XRP, resistance, broken, up. Well, there's a couple that haven't done it yet, right? Bitcoin Cash is a large cap, just did it. TRX is a large cap, just did it. These haven't come back to retest yet. And EOS, look, look at EOS. That's since 2018. Broke out on the biggest volume candle it's had that we can find. That's not the tool I want, you tool, right? Biggest volume candle ever last week on EOS Bitcoin, on Binance, ever, ever. If you think that these runs are going, this is what XRP looked like before it broke out. This is what Ethereum looked like before it broke out. This is what Litecoin looked like before it broke out. And this is what... XRP looked like, and here's what TRX looks like right now. I don't know which chart is going to be right. This is what TRX looks like right now. Break and retest. Okay, so my goal here is I'm just, I bought EOS. I can't believe I said that, but I bought EOS. Because look at it. The biggest volume candle ever on the weekly breaking through a resistance that's been in place since the all-time high. One to three touches, almost, almost rejected and absolutely Chad move through. I, we could trade the safe moons and the Shiba Inus and the dick dog coins or whatever the hell else. And listen, I love myself some shit coins, but for weeks, the most, the, the easiest trade has obviously been in these dinosaur large caps. And I'm going to do that until I can't do it no more. All right. I really like EOS here. I really like it. Really like it. Still like Litecoin. Look at that. Oh, did it get the retest? Not quite. Yeah. Two, 370 is what you want to look for probably for an entry on Litecoin. Then you get this sort of thing. That's Litecoin USD. Here's Ethereum USD. That's the move, right? Came back down, tested the previous all-time high, 1419, heading up. Heading up. Coming over here into the, yeah, I, I've taken a ton of profit this year. Um, so at around 40,000, I sold two and a half percent of my Bitcoin. Oops. No, just kidding. I don't feel bad about it. That was my plan forever. Um, you know, make my life a little better. I don't think anybody should be guilted for taking profits, but like I've been in altcoins forever. Some that were up, you know, 20, 30, 50, 100, 200 X sold. You know, I take a lot of profit in all coins. I've plowed it into Ethereum and Bitcoin and the rest I take out to USDC, which I put on Voyager, some on BlockFi, Nexo to earn crazy yield. And then I take out what I need for taxes and life from that USDC. Bull market end date prediction. I don't really have one and I don't know how anyone could give a reasonable prediction on the end of the bull market. Who knows? I have no idea. I just know that I think that um, we should be going way, 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 way higher. That's what I think. That's what I think. Um, people keep asking about XLM and I had that open. We had an XLM trade in the newsletter, I think last week here. It was actually here. And I said, I think. I said, don't enter until you see a close above this line. Triggered there. Stops were like here-ish, but it didn't matter because it triggered there. And look, this was a setup in the newsletter last week. So it's gone up from the retest. 929 to 50% move or something. Sexy. And this looks like it's consolidating bullishly, right? 
I would say, uh, you know, don't overcomplicate it. There's your support. If you uh, want it, it's risky after this. Pretty big, but major volume on the way up. I think it'll consolidate for a while. Just judging by how it looks there. Um, stocks, well, stocks got pounded a little bit today. They're still up, but thought they were going to go up. But the stock market looks ridiculous. That's the Dow Jones. Uh, let's look at Link. So many people have asked me. So it almost got to the target. The target is $57. I think we'll still get there. But this is a beautiful bull pennant symmetrical trial will break out. Um, has not come down to where I was looking you know, looking to buy, which is around 44, but I'm um, still looking potentially for that drop before it heads up. But this is in price discovery again. These all are. They all look amazing. All these coins look amazing. Let's see it against the Bitcoin pair. These were the ideas that I posted. Nope, that one hit perfectly. So if you followed that, there you go. Yeah, three spastic paths here. But you got to have plans for whatever happens. If you were looking to get into Link against Bitcoin, I would say this is a great entry, and now we should be heading up like that. Um, did you guys see this today? Tom Brady through laser eyes. I don't know where it went, but he has laser eyes on his uh, Twitter profile. I'm curious what you guys think about that. Tell me. Do you think that that's a imminent top signal or do you think that it's awesome? I want to see what you guys think about Tom Brady throwing up laser eyes. Will E3 trace in the next days? I don't know. I have no idea what it'll do because my crystal ball is broken. And I, I, I urge you guys, I know, I urge you guys not to ask questions like this. And it's not a criticism of you. I get it. But like, will this happen in the future? Anyone who gives you a definitive answer to that question is somebody that's trying to like scam you or wants your money or something. Nobody knows what's going to happen. Nobody knows what's going to happen. Ethereum could go back to 1500 next week. I don't know. If Ethereum could go to 10,000. I have no idea. I can tell you what I think is most likely to happen, but there's absolutely no reason to ask what's going to happen. This guy says Tom Brady's laser eyes is bullish. The goat isn't a top signal. It's a bottom one, right? Uh, bullish. Everybody up. Oh, top signal says cue the action. Local top signal. Oh, we've got very mixed. He never loses. That's true. He never loses. He never loses. So, um, he also never eats meat, which I find suspect. Um, so I wonder if that will continue up. I looked at uh, someone saying, what about TRX? But I just looked at it. TRX, that was one of the examples I showed. Look, retest of this macro resistance as support. I've it's Listen, I've been in this since over here. Weeks waiting. I've been posting it. I think it'll go. I don't know if it'll go, but I think it'll go. I think it'll go. Um... Sorry, guys, I'm trying to look at your questions. Is this true? Is Tom Brady launching an NFT platform? He probably is. Every athlete's an NFT. That, to me, is kind of a bubble. And I think NFTs are amazing. I think that the quality will rise to the top. But like everybody wants an NFT. When every single celebrity wants to sell an NFT, you know that none of them are going to probably be worth anything. I've told my baseball card story a million times, but like everything I bought from 1984 to after from those years is basically worthless because same reason everybody wanted to capitalize on the baseball card craze. So they printed a gajillion of them and then they were worth nothing. Great. Um, Litecoin looked at it already did it. This person has said mana OMG probably like 15 times, I think. Um, I'm trying to go through here, but your opinion of low Bitcoin dominance. Let's look at dominance. It's a good question. Well, I know that Bloomberg wrote an article saying that Bitcoin uh, dominance dropping meant there was froth in the market. What? Bitcoin dominance dropping just means Bitcoin's going sideways. Do you guys even do research? Listen, dominance is absolutely dumping. I showed this as an example of what I thought would happen coming down to here. It's happening. That's when it was like up here. Um, yeah, this has been alt season. Absolute massive alt season. But you got to also remember that like 
over here, I don't know how many alts there were in 2017, 18, a couple thousand. Now we have like 10,000 coins on coin market cap. And every time one of those is added, that's more market cap that's going to make Bitcoin dominance drop. So it's a function of two things. Yes, Bitcoin is actually losing dominance. I think Ethereum rising is the clearest example, uh, clearest fundamental reason for Bitcoin dominance dropping. But you're also just adding more and more and more and more and more coins. So the two of those, you get this drop. The question is, when will this end? And will that capital flow from the large caps to the mid caps to the small caps, which we've seen, you know, in the past? Um, do you trade through the bear market? Uh, yeah, I traded through the bear market with mixed results. But largely, you know, if you believe that it's going to go back up and you have a large time frame, you just buy through the bear market. Right. When everybody's fearful, that's when you buy. When everybody's greedy, that's when you sell. Did you guys not see that recently on Saturday Night Live? Maybe dash counts. I have not looked at a dash chart. I, I'm going to look. Look it up. I have not looked at a dash chart in so long. I'll even look at the Bittrex one because it's older. Oh, my God. It's not even there. They, they delisted it, didn't they? Wow. That was no chart. Um, well, there's some really bad TA over here where it didn't go up and it looks like it's bottoming, but this also like, if I was looking at this objectively, I would say that this move just hit resistance. I don't have the magnet on, but something like that. Right. So you want to be above that. I would say this is a lot of resistance right here. Let me lock it in, lock it up, lock it in. I apologize if I'm not joyful enough for you guys today. Just kidding. I didn't realize Crypto Mike, I did see actually, the Crypto Michael tweeted something about uh, being in too bad a mood to live stream. Uh, I wonder if it's personal life. I love that guy or something that happened on Twitter. Cause man, if you like, if you are in our shoes, I can tell you, and you read Twitter like on purpose, and you don't have a really thick skin, you're going to be in a pretty bad mood. A lot of people just talking shit all the time. I would say dash, uh, hit resistance. You want to be above that. And then you should be heading up to here. 0.016 be a pretty big move. That's what I would say. Versus USD. I mean, everything goes up versus USD. Uh, looks pretty good, but kind of might maybe a sending wedge kind of vibe. So I would say you got to be above that. Like in bull markets, these coins tend to break ascending wedges to the upside, but like technically you'd be looking for this. Excuse me, this would be your target actually. So not quite that low. That looks fine, but uh, you're at resistance. That's what I would say there. So you are at resistance. This is a good question. Okay. Can you provide an educational moment and explain how we can draw, identify demand supply zones, please? And thank you, Scott. Absolutely. We can do that. Let's pick a chart. We can we do it with Dash. Did it right there. Okay. I'm going to blank this chart out. This is a weekly chart. So maybe let's take a look at the Dash daily. Okay. Actually, that weekly maybe was the move. Okay. We'll, we'll stay on the weekly. Okay, first, let's talk about the idea of supply and demand, which lines up well with support and resistance, whatever. So the idea is there's supply, which means sell orders or selling interest, correct? That's an area people are looking to sell. But when you're drawing supply and demand zones, you're trying to find areas where there's likely leftover orders, right? So people were looking to sell, price got to a certain area, then price dumped or something, and they did not sell. So they just still have their sell orders sitting there. Demand is the opposite, an area that price left quickly. So people have leftover orders waiting to buy, right? That causes liquidity in those areas. And then people see that and they pile in. It's the self-fulfilling prophecy, right? So these are the areas that I would immediately jump out on. So you basically the most basic understanding of it that you need so you look for an area where price exited quickly, right? So this is the last up candle right here, right? 
Now, when you're doing supply, you don't include the bottom wick. And when you're doing demand, you don't include the top wick. So these are the areas that would jump out to me. So gives you supply and demand. See like here, right? There was all minimal volume, but then an increase in buying volume. So there was a lot of people buying it, rocketed out of there fast. So there was probably a lot of people that wanted to buy right here and still do. Same thing on top. So that's sort of how, that's a very basic lesson on drawing supply and demand, which basically is just saying, hey, where is their liquidity if someone wants to sell and where is the liquidity if someone wants to buy? These are the answers where, these are the areas where people have probably clustered their orders. And listen, it lines up largely with like, you know, if you were going to draw that support, nah, I don't like that one, but uh, maybe, yeah, right? Look, this is the demand, whoop. This is the demand that we had just looked at, right? You would draw supply here. That's also the resistance you would draw at the top here, which carries through all this price action. Look, and that's exactly where it landed, right at the EQ, that dash center line. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's a basic idea of how you do that. Well, you've asked this like 10 times. How do you input stop loss and profit orders at the same time? It depends on the exchange. Some exchanges allow you to do it, some don't. If you can't do it on the exchange and go get a third-party service like three commas or something, you can do it with that. Um, Adam looks like breakout, but does Scott say maybe breakdown volume analysis? I do have Adam pulled up here already. But this was the Adam trade we had from 42.38. It went up to 55. Big move, right? But this was the target. This was the target, and it hit it. This is in the newsletter last week. But I would say that you're coming into support here at 4516. So if you miss that move, I'm not saying it'll stop, but this is what you'd be looking for. Right? Really nice volume on the way up. Although it topped with less volume. Yeah, I mean, you want to get above there because this is a little scary. There's a lot of selling here. So I would say you either buy here or you buy here. And you don't want to be back under like this line. So stops maybe down here. And then you also have like uh, the face of a drunk guy, right? Ooh. That guy's super wasted. Oh, fucking JB Morgan. <clears throat> uh, what do you think of privacy coins such as XMR or R? I, I've never, listen, I know everybody loves R. They've been talking about it for years. It's a, it's a pirate and I can't do it. I just can't do it. Name's not serious enough, serious enough for me to take it seriously, unfortunately. XMR is amazing, but the problem is most privacy coins like XMR, the big ones, need to generally be purchased on centralized exchanges, which kind of defeats the purpose. Like I'm going to go on, I don't even know, Coinbase probably doesn't have it. I don't know who has XMR anymore, but Binance. And by XMR, there's going to be a trail of where I got my XMR that I'm using for privacy. That's why Rune Thorchain, I talked my uh, podcast with Eric Voorhees is coming out tomorrow. And he talked about this. He said, listen, like what's exciting about Thorchain is that you can go into this decentralized environment and go from Bitcoin to USDT, which you couldn't do before, or even into privacy coins without, you know, being on a centralized exchange. And that's pretty exciting. Um, what is your opinion on Ethereum classic lists on Robinhood? New people to crypto go to ETH classic rather than ETH. I said this the other day when Ethereum classic started going up. I said, I bet this is just confused people who are like, ooh, Ethereum's cheaper on the classic one. Let me buy that. I think that's exactly why. I think that Robinhood has, you know, only a few coins listed and people are going to buy the ones that are listed, the ones that seem cheap. I think a lot of people probably confused Ethereum for Ethereum Classic. That said, is there any really great reason that Ethereum Classic should be pumping right now? Mm, I don't know. Maybe not. Sold my Atom and bought EOS, but I'm a DGen. Have at it, bro. Gas fees to drive demand in Matic. I mean, they need to fix gas fees. It was amazing for like a week or two there. They were really low. Today, I went to send an employee some money and the gas fee was like 139 bucks to send like a quick $1,000 transaction or something. <laughs> Nobody wants to pay 13% to send to that. I think they'll fix it. But yes, I think that could drive demand to layer two solutions with lower fees. But then again, 
Like you can also, if you're sending USDT, there's more USDT being sent on Tron than on ERC-20 because it's so cheap. So people are doing that. Uh, let me see. Crypto tax. As long as you don't convert to cash and send a bank account, no tax until you get money. In the United States, no. That is absolutely not how taxes work. That's how we used to uh, believe that they should work and used to pretend they worked in like 2016 and 17. But no, every single transaction that you make with crypto is a taxable transaction. If you buy Bitcoin and then you buy Ethereum with Bitcoin, you've now sold Bitcoin and have a taxable transaction. When you buy, when you go back to Bitcoin, you've now sold Ethereum and have a taxable transaction. When you take your, do- your Bitcoin out to dollars, you've now sold Bitcoin and have a taxable transaction. We get taxed so aggressively in the United States on these transactions. Oh, and by the way, if you buy a Dallas Mavericks hat with Dogecoin that you bought at a penny, but bought it when Doge was 70 cents, you have a taxable transaction on your gains from one penny to 70 cents every time you spend any crypto. Crypto is shitty cash in the United States with the present tax system. Buy coffee with Bitcoin, you just sold your Bitcoin. Stable coins fix this, but uh, no, that is not how taxes work, Derek. So be very, very, very careful. Yes, the IRS sucks. And it's funny because in 2016, 2017, we were like, dude, crypto is amazing. You can make all this money and you don't even need to pay taxes wrong. Wrong. Every single time you use your crypto, it's a taxable sale, even if you're buying something with it. Which hardware wallet do you use? I have a few of them. Um, I still use a ledger, even though uh, the ledger is secure, but the data... Clearly was not. Uh, but for my Bitcoin, I use multisig, which I've been pretty open about. Costs on multisig. So you need to have three out of five devices for me to send my Bitcoin. I can't even send Bitcoin. It would take me a week to go find like to the bulk of my Bitcoin. I, I, I don't have access to it. I have to keep it that way because assholes on Twitter threaten me all the time because a bunch of dudes like troll me and it gets serious and, and behind it. But um, yeah, I, I like those. But I actually... Um, just invested in a company called Engrave. It's not a token, it's a company. I've been waiting for a wallet from them for probably a year, but I think that their wallet's going to be absolutely amazing and actually invested in the company. Um, I talked about this earlier. I have no idea and I'm not touching it personally. Um, Let me see what... Ethereum bull run 2017, 14,000%. This time we are only at 2,000% gain. Where do you think ETH can go? I think ETH can go a lot, lot higher. A lot higher. Uh, There's a 50K strike for 10 months from now, if that gives you an idea. But listen, probably two months ago, I tweeted simply, I think that Ethereum could reach $10,000 this year and got so much anger and hate for that, that I was just being a moon boy and for engagement, whatever. I happen to believe it. I happen to believe we could e- we could get to ten thousand. Do you collect NFTs? Uh, very, 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 very specific NFTs. But in general, no, because I think that most of them will be worth jack shit all. Um, but uh, like uh, my friend Micah Johnson is an incredible artist. He has Aku. I don't know if you guys have seen that Aku Dreams. Um, the little boy who wears the astronaut helmet. I've bought everything I can get my hands on of those because I really believe in it and think it's incredible. Um, I have a, I bought a physical painting from Trevor Jones that will be hanging up here of a humongous wolf and he's NFTing that for me. And then a couple uh, select NFTs beyond that. Um, no, I'm not holding any vet. Um, guys, I'm not going to like just take these spams. So this person, oh, Future and Change, he's here in case you guys missed it. He's here and he will kiss me. So I'm hoping that we do not get to 50K, lest a stranger show up at my door and kiss me. Um, yeah, if you're using the first generation of Ledger Wallet, I would probably like upgrade personally. You know, the firmware, these things die, man. But it doesn't mean you lose your coins. You go, you still get them, but you know, whatever. Uh, What's your opinion about grayscale portfolio? Most of them are pumping these days. I mean, GBTC, I believe, is still trading at a negative. I haven't looked lately, but um, I think they're fine. And when an ETF is approved, they'll probably go to an ETF and that'll be that. Um, But 
I think GBTC is necessary until there's an ETF. I think it's important for institutional investors or people who don't understand and want to just buy something and put it in their IRA, you know, their retirement. But like for anyone savvy enough to buy Bitcoin, I don't see why you would do that. Um, <clears throat> I do not have a prediction on Solana. I do not have uh, opinion on storage. I do not care about a rocket emoji next to an RLC. I still have no opinion on storage. I uh, already looked at ADA. Chia coin has got to be a joke. I have no idea what that is. Engine seems cool. Don't care. This guy's laughing his ass off. I don't even know if Pi Network is actually a thing. I just looked at Ethereum Classic. Yeah, guys, maybe think before you, uh, you know, throw something in the comments. If that little rant didn't tell you. Um, so listen, I've been like on all the lower cap stuff, the stuff I trade on matcha, which I use instead of Uniswap, but I like it better. Um, I've been trading into Ethereum of late. I used to trade and go into USDT or USDC. Now I just go into Ethereum and it's been very, very profitable. So I like trading those pairs, especially on lower caps where the Bitcoin pairs make no sense. Um, I, I have. I literally have no idea what half of you are talking about at all. Puerto Rico in the house, though. Puerto Rico, ho, oh, good taxes down there. That's where you want to be. Um, coin. Oh, yeah, let's look at that. I think I pulled it up. Coinbase. I think I'm actually not underwater anymore. I think I'm not. This is the hourly, so it started here today. Woo, boy. I bought at 252 and I said, this looks like the bottom of a channel. Of course, I also bought at 320, 290 and 270 something. So no, not much need to celebrate. But as I was averaging down, I was buying more each time. So I'm about, I think my cost basis is 290. I think I am no longer underwater on Coinbase stock. Listen, this is an hourly chart. Like who cares? But yeah, this looks like bullish consolidation should be heading back up. Yeah, Coinbase. I was pretty underwater there. I was pretty underwater there. Um, so you, there's software. There's tons of software. I use uh, <clears throat> a couple of them. Um, check out your favorite one. I'm not really like here to show one, but uh, you just import all your wallets software, which is the funniest thing, guys. If you're in the United States and you're paying your taxes, you're importing every single transaction into there. It's the most transparent shit ever. You can't hide anything unless you want to be, uh, you know, uh, risking tax evasion, which it isn't. And that's also hilarious when you think about it, when they criticize like any American who has half a brain of like pumping and dumping or being a scam or whatever, like every single transaction we show could be lined up with like our Twitter or whatever. Like it's so obvious you can't do that shit. Like you cannot manipulate the market because we're showing every single transaction, every single transaction. Um, what do you think? Time to switch from Ethereum to large cap alts now. Wait for a small correction first. I don't really know. I'm not selling any Ethereum. I'll tell you that. I'll tell you that. VPNs, VPNs, Fred, VPNs don't matter because if you want to pay your taxes, you have to report every single trade, every trade, every transaction, every single one, every single one. Uh, I haven't looked at a Solana chart, but I think that Solana is an amazing asset and should probably continue going up. That's like so funny. This guy, they're pumping and dumping, bro. Like you, I'm literally, we literally, all of us, I don't know where people are, but we're showing the government every single trade that we make. <laughs> here's all, here's every transaction that I've done, Right. So you can't do that. Um, I mean, the biggest market for ETH options, I would imagine, is Deribit. They're the biggest options exchange by far for crypto. Best live feed on the interwebs. Daniel, your check is in the mail. Thank you for the comment. Um, guys, keep asking me. I, I don't even know what the fuck bake is. Is that like when you make a cake? I don't know what any of these coins are. Um, you guys are really degenerates, though, based on some of the stuff I'm seeing, which I like. Shibu Inu. Yes, Shiba Inu, it's a really nice dog. Yes, why don't you do it again? Here he is again, Shiba Inu. Um, yes, this is a good question that is actually worth discussing instead of your 9,000 chart requests. Any thoughts on using YubiKey for better exchange security? I absolutely use them. I have them 
everywhere. I use them on every computer. I have backups. I use them with, you know, for, for everything that I can possibly use. Um, any exchange that allows <clears throat> any exchange that allows you um, to use them is a good thing. Like Binance, Binance US for sure. You cannot send a transaction out without a few things. So uh, I don't use Binance anymore as an American, but like when I was on there, it would be you needed, they would send you an email. So you'd have a Proton Mail, which was obviously encrypted and had two factor authorization, uh, two factor on it, which was on a separate device, obviously a Google Authenticator. So you needed to do that. And then you also needed to actually put the YubiKey into your computer and push the thing on there for it to do it. Really a lot of fail safes there for somebody if they're trying to hack you for withdrawing and you can whitelist the addresses that you're sending to. YubiKeys are amazing. If you can use them, you should absolutely, absolutely use them. You just need to make sure that you don't lose it and you have backup. Um, let me look. Just a friendly fuck you, Scott. Thank you. Thank you. Fuck you too. Um, he did it again. Typed it twice. Uh, coin up on a day that NASDAQ is down pretty big. I'll take it. Um, already looked at this. Yeah, I don't know who has YubiKeys here, but they're amazing. They're absolutely amazing. Um, I don't know what that means. If I subscribe to your newsletter, will I be paying more if I get membership? I would hope you'd be paying the same. Yes, Derby is not allowing to trade options if you're a U.S. resident. That is probably true. You can trade them on Kraken. If you have an institutional crowd, you can definitely trade them on the CME. Um, let me see what this says. Retail DeFi has exploded. TVL, a few companies are focusing on enterprise DeFi and tokenized invoices, Coca-Cola, ServiceNow, Google, and Target. I don't know that much about that, but sounds amazing. Sounds amazing. Uh, somebody just said they want me to talk fundamentals more often. I can do that. Um, what is this? I don't know. Uh, why are people considering using Uniswap on the ETH network with huge gas fees over QuickSwap on the Polygon network, which is basically zero fees? I can't speak for other people. And like I said, I like to use Matcha, which sources liquidity from Uniswap, One Inch, and others, and also tends to find better prices. But people do it because of liquidity. That's why I've been like, if you want to, if you're not trading $100, $500, if you're trading with any sort of size, you suffer the gas fees because you want to make sure that your orders will fill and that you're not going to, you know, rock the market if you put in an order that's just kind of the reality of it where do you expect litecoin to go in the next six months up i have no idea where and i have no idea if it actually will but up 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 i do not use order flow anymore i used to use order flow i used to use a lot of things now i just keep it as you guys have heard this k-i-s-s -S, kiss keep it simple stupid that's my whole theory on everything Really, really obvious things. Draw a couple lines, set a stop loss. I barely even trade. I've said that a thousand times for months. And I love when people's criticism is like, that guy's not a trader. He doesn't even trade. Well, I'm a trader. I just don't need to trade because I made a lot of money investing and buying shit through the entire bear market. So I don't need to trade. And why would I waste my time trading if I don't need to? Um, but yeah, I don't look at order flow. I don't look at order books because I think that largely they're telling you a story that's the opposite of what you're seeing. Like a lot of people, when you're a beginner, you see a huge sell wall and you're like, I got to sell, bro. Like somebody's trying to sell really hard. No, somebody's trying to hold price down so that they can buy, right? A huge sell wall is usually bullish. It's somebody holding price so they can fill orders to buy before they lift the sell wall. And you know what's illegal in normal markets in the United States and other places? That. You're not allowed in the United States legally in the stock market to place an order that you do not intend to fill. It's called spoofing. It's illegal, but totally fine in crypto. So a huge buy wall is not, you get into crypto for the first time and you look at Binance, and you're like, oh my God, there's a huge buy wall. I need to buy really fast up here because they're just going to push price up. No, what they're going to do is sell into your buy orders above that wall and then lift the wall and let price fall. That's usually what is happening, the opposite of what you guys probably are thinking. 
But the, the very long answer um, to a small question is no, I don't really look at those things. I think they're amazing. I think people use all of these tools exceptionally well. Just for me, I don't really, don't really need to. Bitcoin dumping, I don't know. It's down a little bit. It's fine. Um, what kind of hands do you have? Well, I have diamond hands for Bitcoin, but I think we all know my Doge story that I've told. I mean, and my, my wife has been reminding me pretty regularly that I could have had like $30, $40 million worth of Doge if I had just had diamond hands on Doge. So I think that I've on Doge, like my hands were so spaghetti that I'm down to like spaghetti armpits. I don't even have arms anymore. They just flap like squid, squid limbs. Sad, sad. My favorite indicator is RSI, but not because of RSI, just for looking for divergences. Because, you know, obviously if you see strength rising on RSI, but price dropping, you know, there's a divergence there and that you have a likely chance of uh, making a whole lot of money and finding a reversal. Holy Doge, bro. Dude, back then it was like 20 grand in Doge. Or so, I don't remember, but it, like, you know, 30, 40 grand in Doge. It was a lot, but we we're in the, we we're in the bull run. You agree with Rand that the markets can't crash due to the money printing? No, I do not agree with that. I think that uh, that's true to a point, but every market in history corrects and every fiat currency has died when they've overprinted. So uh, that might be true for a while, but it's certainly not going to be true forever. Not going to be true forever. But honestly, like playing devil's advocate, money printing is terrible. I Terrible. But... What is a central bank supposed to do? Because if they don't print money now, we're going to have a depression, right? I'm not justifying their actions. I think the whole system is broken, but it would, it would, it would send things into a depression. And the end game of a depression actually would probably be beneficial to most people because we would have deflation. The price of assets would come down. People wouldn't need as much money to survive. But getting there would be so much pain that no government would allow it because, I mean, A, they got to get reelected and B, they need to survive, especially if you are the, you know, controlling the dollar, which is the world reserve currency. They have to print money. There's no other way right now. I'm not justifying it. It's terrible, but they're just going to print. I mean, they, they have to print. Deflation, I mean, what people don't understand is that the, their fear is not inflation. The fear is deflation, right? Deflation is, is what destroys governments and destroys people because that's when you get a depression. That's when nobody has a job. But everything about technology and the evolution of the way things are working technologically is deflationary. We create better machines make goods much cheaper to produce. And those machines at the same time take people's jobs. So less people getting jobs, price of goods inherently coming down because of better technology, that's deflation. This guy looks like he's staying up all night sniffing lines. Here's what it is. Here's what it is. I look like a coquette apparently. Um, what's up with loop ring? I don't know. No idea. Yeah, deflation. Let's go. Hooray. So listen, I mean, you know, Jeff Booth, a lot of people have made the argument. Um, that's rude. Yes, you guys should see my uh, Twitter mentioned sometimes. That was probably the nicest thing anyone said to me today. Um, and then you get exactly, oh, this is great. What Nathan just said, who doesn't know this reference? South Park. They ticker germs. They ticker germs. Ticker germs. They ticker germs. That's right. The machines are coming for your jobs. They cut. No, I do not cut my own hair. I did for a long time. No, I don't cut my own hair. It's a weird question. Weird question. You guys are got some weird questions today. Do you think mortgage interest rates will rise? To, I don't know, man. I thought the housing market was complete. I was couldn't have been more dead wrong about uh, real estate. Right. I thought that crypto hit the real estate market was going to crash. Instead, we got this like supply side. Uh, shortage. And if you're in California and you want to buy a house, there's like 15 offers, 30% over list before the thing even lists. The mar housing market's insane. So I don't really know. I, I have no thoughts on that because I've been dead ass wrong. Um, uh, there's nothing between me and those guys. They don't like me. It's fine. You know, they, they, they've had some things to say about me. Uh, but, you know, listen, when... 
this should just be like in general, uh, nothing to do with those guys. Respect those guys. Don't even whatever. They, they don't like me. I mean, Kobe said he doesn't like my picture and my name. That's fine. Um, but like if people accuse you of things on the internet that aren't true, it's not your job to respond. It's fine. Um, do you like RSI or OBV? I like RSI. OBV is cool too. Uh, yeah, California is insane. It's absolutely insane. You can't buy anything without paying like 30 or 40% over market. Uh, oh, it's three o'clock. Hate to say it, guys. Hate to see it, guys, but we are, we are done here. We are done here. It has been absolutely real with you people. Appreciate you. And uh, yeah, I'll probably have a video tomorrow. Be back on Wednesday for another live stream. Until then, peace. <laughs>